to the video of today, which is the top five villains of all time in movies. Now, this is just my opinion, my personal opinion. So don't criticize me. Well, you can criticize me if you want. You can say that it's, you know, you don't agree, which I'm fine, fine with. If you guys don't agree with my list, that's fine. Let me know in the comments what is your top five, because I'm very interested to hear what everyone is. So I've taken everything into consideration, character, motive, all that stuff into this. So you won't be seeing an alien or a predator or the Terminator turn up in this particular list, because personally, I don't think there's too much character development within the characters of those particular ones. They're just monsters or beasts or machines that are just there to give the people that are in the movies, basically, something obstacle to overcome. That's how I see those characters. I don't actually see them as legit, proper, like, full-on characters with character development. That's why you won't see them in this list. So without further ado, make sure you give us your top five, and make sure you give us a like, subscribe, and let's get right into this video. Number five, Scar. This is Scar from The Lion King, and I tell you what, Scar from The Lion King, he is an interesting character, and a very, very good, cunning villain. Now, he... This is a beloved movie. Everyone loves The Lion King. I mean, who does not like The Lion King, the animated version? It is one of the best, if not the best, animated film of all time. Everyone loves this, and what makes it so good is Scar as the villain works perfectly. Perfectly. The uncle to Simba, the brother to Mufasa. The way that he... He wants the throne. Scar wants the throne. And he will do anything he has to in order to get this throne. And the way you see Scar develop as a character to not really liking his own kind. He doesn't really care for his brother. And he doesn't really care for his uh, nephew. He doesn't care at all. And you see the motive of him that basically, I want everything. How am I going to do that? How does he execute it? He manipulates his way. He's very manipulative, very manipulative, sorry, and very cunning. Scar is so smart. He knows he doesn't have the brawn and the strength to beat Mufasa one-on-one. -on -one. Instead, he uses his brain how on how to beat Mufasa. And he devises this very elaborate plan to get Simba down, manipulate Simba in order to get down there to execute his plan, to be able to take Mufasa out and Simba at the same time, so he can take over. And then you just see the whole, the whole way he manipulates the hyenas, the way then at the end where he tries to manipulate Simba again to believing he was the one that killed Mufasa. Scar is one of those characters, one of those villains that is necessary for a movie like this and he's so clinically, clinically, it doesn't even make sense. He is so great and the execution was done perfectly and that is one of the reasons why The Lion King is such a good film is because of the villain Scar who comes in at number five. Number four, Thanos. The newly appointed MCU Big Bad has made this top list. I mean, how can you not have Thanos in this list? The guy is absolutely a beast and is so complex and so much character to him. Now, the biggest thing that draws me straight to Thanos is his mindset. This guy has the will to do what he sets his mind to. This guy believes... That's right, he believes he is the hero of the story. He believes what he is doing is the right thing. By wiping out half of existence, he is giving everyone else a chance to flourish in life. And he sees that as the ultimative. That's the only way to save the galaxy. That's the only way to save the universe. And he's the only one that can do it. And that's what makes him so freaking good, is he believes he is the hero of this story. And there is so much from when he, he explains how Titan, he gave them a solution and he didn't see it as mass genocide, he saw it as a solution by cutting half the life on there at random, which is fair, no, you're rich, you're famous, you survive, it's basically a random draw, completely fair, and that, that way then they can sustain and live on, and then he sees his planet, you know, blown up, well not blown up, but like basically extinct, and he says he's a survivor, and you see this whole character arc Thanos goes through in Infinity War, and then you see him at, at the start of Endgame, where he, this guy stares death in the face. He just says, I've done what I needed to do. Simple as, kill me. Doesn't bother me. I've done what I was set out to do. And he just stares death in the face. Even in Endgame, he sits down after defeat and accepts it. And just accepts it and goes, you know what, I lost. 
Simple as. And this is what makes Thanos such a great villain. And he got two movies as well, which helps as well. And he was the big bad pulling the strings behind everything in the MCU. And he has got to be in this top five. Number four, Thanos. Number three, The Joker. Heath Ledger puts on an Oscar winning performance as The Joker. This Joker in The Dark Knight is just absolutely freaking phenomenal. So, so good. The way Heath Ledger is able to bring this character to life is so, so good. This character of the Joker is one of the best villains of all time. There is so much complexity to this character. The chaotic version, the chaotic person that is the yin and yang to Batman. He is there. Batman is the good, he is the evil. And what makes this Joker so good is he doesn't actually go out of his way, particularly, to cause death or anything like that. What he does is he likes to detect, he likes to test society. And he likes to test how they would react in certain situations. For example, the boat. He gives them the choice to blow each other up. Not, he doesn't do it himself. He gives it to them. And this is what he does. The hospital, he does it as well. And he just basically is this character that is manipulating people to do what he wants them to do without having to do anything. And he knows how to hit Batman in the right spot. He knows how to bring down Gotham in the right spot. How do you do that? You don't take Batman down, you take the White Knight. You take the hope. The people that... The, the person the people turn to. Harvey Dent. How do you, how do you destroy society? You take their... The person they look up to the most and you turn him. You turn him to the dark side, so to speak. You turn him evil. And that's what the Joker does. It's just a perfect example of how to do a villain right as a secondary character to a main character. And Christopher Nolan nailed this character. Heath Ledger performed it perfectly. And number three, the Joker. Number two, Magneto. This is Ian McKellen's and Michael Fassbender. I mean, the Magneto character is so, so good. Oh, the complexity behind this character. From his beginning, his hard start to life, at the concentration camps, going through all this stuff that he went through to getting to where he is now. The great, how he had the friendship with Charles, the way that he bounces off him, the way that them two articulate to each other their thoughts on different things. But what makes Magneto even better is his attitude, his motive, the way he decides things, the way he just goes, you know what? The humans don't want to evolve. They just want to kill us. They want us to go extinct. So instead of being the people who go extinct, let's make sure that that doesn't happen. So he turns and he has this idea of humans are evil. They don't care. They don't care about anything. And just because we are now evolving beyond them, they don't like it. It scares them. The unknown scares them. And the complexity of his thinking, of turning on the humans and saying, Charles, we need to do this. Otherwise, they'll just turn and they'll just put us in a cell because they don't like us. And they will just, we'll just be another slave to them. And he's just a absolutely phenomenal character. Then you get to Michael Fassbender's character of Magneto as well, who has the same views as you see him as a younger one, go through the transition of a good guy to a bad guy, back to a good guy. And basically... Seeing how he transitions as a character and his motives change. He gets a family. He sees his family murdered right in front of him. And it turns on the switch again where he's just like, F this. I don't even care anymore. Humans don't care. They took out my family. Now I'm coming from. Magneto is such a great character. One of the best characters. And this is just an absolute phenomenal villain. Number two, Magneto. Number one, Darth Vader. Oh, I mean, come on. Is there a, a more iconic villain than Darth Vader? Not in my opinion. I think Darth Vader is the most iconic villain and one of, the, one of, if not the most iconic character in pop culture. Everyone knows Darth Vader. This guy stro strikes fear. He strikes authority. This guy is a presence. And when you see... Darth Vader on screen, you know shit's about to get real. This guy was the first major villain that took things to another level, in my opinion. Over the course of A New Hope, Empire, 
Return of the Jedi, you get that beautiful, beautiful transition and character development of Darth Vader. You see him from episode 4, this ruthless, doesn't care villain, to then you get to Empire where he starts to see that Luke is his son and he starts getting a bond with Luke and starting to get this connection. And then you see how ruthless he can still be as well. And then you get to Return of the Jedi. And if it wasn't for Dave Filoni, this I would never have really understood. But now I totally understand it. When Luke strikes, goes to strike down um, Palpatine, Vader then steps in with his lightsaber and stops Luke from doing that. Now this whole fight from Vader to Luke is crucial because this is Vader stepping in and making sure his son doesn't go down the same path he went down. Because Luke would have gone down that path. Luke was ready to kill the Emperor. Vader stepped in to stop him from doing this. And this whole fight is Vader. Vader knows Luke's stronger than him at this point and Vader is trying his best to make sure Luke doesn't do the same mistake as him. And that's why the sacrifice that Vader then makes for Luke in the end is the ultimate sacrifice as a father because he knows he never had that father figure in his whole entire life, Darth Vader. This is his chance to be that father, to be that figure, to be the hope that Luke needed in his life to stop him from turning dark. And that character arc to me is just the best character arc in a villain. It is just so phenomenal. Darth Vader is just absolutely brilliant. And then you get the Rogue One scene and we see Darth Vader just wreck shit. Simple as. Darth Vader, number one all-time villain. So there you have it. That is my top five villains of all time in movies. Let me know in the comments below. What are your top five? Which villains do you like? Because there is a lot of villains. It was hard making this list. Like there is so many that I ha could have put on here that I just couldn't because of my five that I like. I mean, there's so many villains that are actually really, really good. And yeah, so let me know in the comments. Give us a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.